in Egypt. So, Professor Ahab today will give us an update for hepatitis C virus and hemodialysis. And he will touch the new class of anti-hepatitis C that gave us a glimmer of hope for the management of this uh, viral hepatitis and we are eager to know the update of this one topic. Professor Ian. Thank you very much, my dear professor and my dear friend and my dear brother, Professor Hussein. Uh, uh, and thank, thanks to the audience and uh, welcome, uh, my dear professor Kamal Mokesha and dear professor Hanan. Uh, professor, inshallah. And many thanks to my dear uh, brother and professor Ayman Rafai. Uh, we will talk about for the for the fifth time. Uh, previously, it was every year, but the last uh, the last lecture was since four months. And uh, every month or every two months, we. Uh, uh, in, uh, one of new drugs emerge regarding hepatitis C. So we will uh, talk about HCV and hemodialysis update. Hepatitis C, WHO estimate that about 3% of the world's population are infected with HCV. Unfortunately, Egypt has the highest prevalence in the world estimated nationally at about 15% of the general population. The most common type is HCV genotype 4, account for more than 90%. This is Egypt, Japan, China, Asia. About the worldwide distribution of genotypes, Egypt, Middle East, and nearly whole Africa, genotype 4 is the dominant one, genotype 4. So our topic will be directed mainly to genotype 4. At the life cycle of HCV, we will touch it lightly regarding the viral RNA is released into the cytoplasm and translated to generate a single large polyprotein that is processed into the 10 mature HCV proteins. The 10 mature HCV proteins are the site of action of all direct acting antivirals. And Unlike HIV and hepatitis B, HCV is unable to integrate itself into the host genome and can thus be cured. For the first time, to be announced that hepatitis C is the only viral hepatitis which can be cured, not treated, but can be cured. About the progress in achieving sustained viral response in chronic hepatitis C with interferon-based regimen, this was till begulated interferon and ribavirin era with maximum sustained virologic response about 55%. This before the era of direct antiviral. As all of you know that the mechanism of action of ribavirin and regulated interferon was unknown. You cannot define it certainly, but definitely. But with the direct acting antiviral, we can know what the drug acts and how it acts. These are the 10 proteins C, Enfro1, Enfro2, and all these non-structural proteins. All of them is a target of a group of direct antivirals. For example, that latasvir is NS5A inhibitor, lidipasvir, 
in best player. All it do is as player, which act non-structural protein 5A inhibitor. We can look at Barita prefer and Tila prefer and the CD prefer, which are protease inhibitors. And to come to Sophos Bovary, Sophos Bovary, which is the backbone of all diet, most, most of diet acting antiviral regimens in Egypt, because it is pan genotypic coverage, high barrier to resistance, and intermediate to high potency. Of course, the picture now differs from the, the time when sophosphobia emerged. But till now, it is still the backbone, it is still hopeful, still I add most of my acting agent on it. It, it is non-structural 5P segment related. So, the three groups, protease inhibitors end with prefer, polymerase inhibitors end with prefer, and NS5A inhibitor end with asperger. As you see, and what else? This is the situation in 2013. Only regulated interferon in two forms, alpha 2A and alpha 2B, and ribavir. This is situation 2014, Sovaldi, Sophos Bouvier, and the CB Bouvier. Then, Baclatas Bouvier. And lastly, a combination of four medications, four genotypes other than four, and the three medications for genotype four. These are Ombita, Brever, and Ritaver, and Barita Brever. Plus, that's a river for genotype, all genotypes other than four. On beta river, parita river, and retuna river. This is the drug which was synthesized from this to genotype four. It is only on beta river, parita river, and retuna river. But this add decibel to these three structures. And lastly, Lidibasvir Sophosbuvir. As you know, only this structure is free from Sophosbuvir, while all other regimen contain Sophosbuvir. The Lidibasvir Sophosbuvir in the fixed dose combination, 90 mg Lidibasvir till 400 Sophosbuvir. The overall response rate is about 90-98%. Generally, it is safe with no severe side effects apart from fatigue, malaise, and to some extent insomnia. About Barita Brevir, Ritunavir, on Beta Svir, plus or minus Dasabovir, plus Dasabovir for all genotypes other than four. But for genotype four, the Egyptian and the African genotype, only Barita Brevir, Ritunavir, and on Beta Svir. Still, the cumulative experience is not sufficient to give a decision regarding this structure. Only it is impressions. The daily fixed dose combination of paritabriver, ritunavir, ombitasvir, plus or minus desabovir. But in the last October, the FDA released a warning regarding 
the use of this form of three medication in patients with cirrhosis. So, before prescription of this medication, I must make sure that this patient is not cirrhotic. Child A, not child B or child C. For this dilemma, the University of Liverpool provided this service with summary data of hepatitis drug interaction. Full details are available at this website in form of Liverpool Head Eye Chart. All of us, even the old hepatologist, cannot prescribe any medication except after investigating this site. Uh, the study with beta-previr, beta-previr, etonavir, plus or minus ribavirin in genotype 4, this uh, study resulted in 100% sustained virologic response uh, in treatment experiences rather than treatment naive. All, all medications, the result in treatment naive is better than treatment experience. But in this study, the treatment experience outcome was better than treatment naive. And we still searching for the cause of the explanation. The international guidelines, the easy or bien association for the study of liver disease in the last year put this uh, guideline about genotype 4 as it is clear and this year ESIL didn't which passed within, uh, within, uh, within 13 days didn't uh, didn't give a new guidelines and contrary to American Association which which give guidelines every about 6 months as we see so, the easy guideline, to some extent, old. This is the uh, summary. Sophos over lidibasvir, known as harmony, a non serotic 12 week without ribavirin, compensated cirrhosis child A, 12 week with ribavirin, or 24 week without ribavirin. As we see, this on beta varita retona prefer cannot be prescribed in decompensated cirrhosis. Only in child A. Again, we cannot prescribe this combination except we are sure that the patient is not cirrhotic or early child A, not child B nor C. Sophosbovir, Daglatasvir. About the American Association study, American Association for the Study of Liver Disease, and the Infectious Disease Society of America. These guidelines were released uh, February in the, in about, since about two months. Also, the World Health Organization in April this month. These guidelines regarding patients with renal impairment as follows. In cases of creatinine clearance, 30 till 80. No dose adjustment is required when using Daclatasvir, fixed combination Lidibasvir, Sophosbuvir, fixed combination Parita Retona on Beta Svir. This level of evidence is class 1, level A. This is the level of evidence of this recommendation. Class 1, level A. These guidelines. About creatinine clearance below 30 or in this day, when the urgency to treat is high and kidney transplant is not an immediate option. I, I, I want to negotiate with my professors who patient on hemodialysis, who would you like to treat and who would you like to leave? regarding transportation or not, and regarding trans, transporta trans, uh, 
transformation from negative from C, C machine till negative machine. Is it logic to treat all HCV on hemodialysis or those who will be directed to transplantation? I think it is it will be a matter of of discussion. When the urgency to treat is high and kidney transplant is not an immediate option, they fix the dose combination of Elbasvir and Grazobrivir is the recommended regimen level of evidence class to be level B. But unfortunately, these two drugs are not available in Egypt till now. So, the daily fixed the alternative, alternative uh, regimen, daily fixed dose combination of barita prevail, retona prevail, retona prevail, and ombita spare. With the hibavirin at reduced dose, 200 milligram every other day, three times per week, or week or daily, either 200 milligram daily or every other day, for 12 weeks is an alternative regimen. Caution is recommended due to the potential for hemolytic anemia, due to impaired renal clearance, and the providing should be restricted to those with a baseline hemoglobin concentration above 10 gram per deciliter. Uh, also, uh, I don't know uh, what the percent of those on hemodialysis with hemoglobin over than 10. I think it is also to be a matter of discussion. Class, a, a level of evidence class to be level B. Ribavirin should be discontinued if hemoglobin level declines by more than 2 grams despite the use of erythropoietin. <coughs> Again, these guidelines. After kidney, kidney transplantation, we can use the most famous co-regimen sophosphobere daclatasvir or sophosphobere lidibasvir. This paper was published, accepted for, uh, I think, since, since 10 days. Efficacy of direct acting antiviral combination for patients with hepatitis C virus, genotype 1 infection, and severe renal impairment or in this stage renal disease. 20 patients were given on beta co formulated with barita prevair and ritonavir. All of them completed 12 weeks of treatment, 18 of them achieved sustained virologic response, about 90%. But and the drugs were well tolerated. Another, another article, therapy of hepatitis C viral direct acting and viral. Is it the end of HCV in dialysis population? Patients with HCV genotype 1 and chronic kidney disease stage 4 or 5 were given the 3D regimen. Treatment were generally well tolerated and all patients completed treatment with 100% end of treatment viral response. It is end of treatment viral response. It is, it is not the response. The response means sustained virologic response. Negative PCR. 12 weeks after stoppage of treatment. This is the SCDR, sustained virologic response, negative. RNPCR, after, 12 weeks after end of treatment. All patients complete treatment, but data on sustained viral response is under evaluation. This drug choice need to be guided by safety in patients with renal impairment. As you see, this is the primary metabolic. This is the primary metabolic pathway. As you see, barita prevail, ombita, svir, and dasabovir. Primary metabolic pathway is hepatic. So, not prescribed in patients child B or C, only child A. So, the predicted need for dose adjustment if GFR below 15 is not required.
this algorithm may, uh, may be uh, the renal disease with estimated GFR below 30 in genotypes 2, 3, 5, 6 or genotype 1 and 4. Genotype 1 and 4 to some extent are can be can be uh, can be managed to uh, to some extent with with near regimen. In the era of interferon, they were called difficult to treat. Difficult to treat genotype one and four. Genotype which is common in these states and, and North America. Genotype four in Egypt and Africa. And serotic genotype or four. For genotype 2, 3, 5, 6, degenerated interferon plus ribavirin or to wait. In genotype 1 and 4, non serotic genotypes, non serotic patients, on beta ribavirin plus or minus ribavirin or uh, elpasvir and glazoprevir as, as the American guidelines stated. But in cirrhotic, if compensated, I with impasvir and grasoprevir, if it is decompensated, I will wait for new therapies. The special population and in the heart of it, chronic kidney disease patients have direct acting treatment options. Most of them enjoy excellent outcomes, which means sustained biological response. But persons with end-stage renal disease represent the largest group with unmet need, unfortunately. If it is the Arch of Triumph in the center of Paris, curing chronic hepatitis C will be the Arch of a medical triumph, but the main obstacle till now still financial. Hepatitis C now, if this is the end, to my mind, now this is not the end, it is not even the beginning of the end, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. And thank you. Thank you. <coughs> thank you very much, Professor Ehad, for this elegant and most updated data on the uh, anti hepatitis C. The, the new class that we, we eager to know the future of these classes and the, the, the talk is open for discussion. Dr. Uh, Hen. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Hen, for this interesting lecture. I must ask uh, one about the They didn't take any antiviral before, and we took uh, uh, incomplete courses of interferon and spoke with the cost or any or not related regarding with the duration of antiviral and the relevant time. Yes. Uh, about the duration, the naive patient will receive medication for 12 weeks. But in cirrhotic or post transplant or relapse or non-responder, the duration extended to 24 weeks. In the relapse, non-responder, previously treated, and post-transplant, uh, the duration extended to 24 weeks. About the regimen, I think the recovery is important. Any patient who can to the retrievalent with dose modification, the percent of the of success will be higher than without recovery. Our experience, and as, as you know, we, we cannot exclude sofosbuvir. Also, we cannot exclude ribavirin, except if the patient cannot tolerate. Who is eligible for treatment with ribavirin? Who can tolerate? It is better to be added. Even with those titration as 20, 200 every other day, it is it is a very very small dose. But who can tolerate? Better to be added. Another question. Uh, what about the compensated liver? Uh, with the 
Yeah, yeah. Very difficult question. Decompensated level. Child B or C or for F2 of F3 and type of scan. So the answer is clear from a smile and, and the listening and hearing. Sometimes this is the well, that we have. It's just to listen and to have shoulder movement or smile. So this is a good answer. So the if you have questions I'll be happy. Yes, please. Thank you, Professor, for your uh, presentation. My question is uh, uh, when we can start the treatment uh, for hepatitis C, because I see that there you, you said that uh, can prescribe for the genotype 1 or 4 is common in African countries uh, when uh, there is a, a non cirrhotic patient. So my question is this, can I prescribe the treatment when we diagnose the hepatitis C or not? On hepatitis or uh, for a general? For general patient. Yes. It is a matter of, uh, of pros and cons, of with and without. Uh, but in our country, we try to treat every patient. Every patient must be treated as early as you can, except if there is, except if there is uh, contraindication to treat. Every patient with HCV can be treated. I think uh, it is uh, the answer or. I think the, <coughs> the literature is full of indications and uh, if the patient is fit, this is the, the cutoff point, if the patient is fit for antiviral and I'm not, I'm not acquainted by the contraindication of the new classes in respect of uh, limitation because of g what are the contraindications for the new class because we know the contraindications of the old treatment interferon and removiral. The absolute contraindication of removing is pregnancy. And other than this is relative. Interfering with psychosis and other, we are aware by this contraindication. Regarding the new class, is there any contraindication? In the body pharmacy, in the patient who is multi, multi system disease or diabetic and hypertensive, I must revise all the medication and filtrate on him by chart if there's contraindication. If there is dose modification, because I may give the medication which is expensive and would interact with other medication which is vital for him as uh, as coagulopathy cases and heart, and I must revise the the, the uh, medication of the patient, and I, uh, I I put the the which which for which. If the patient is cardiac and cannot cannot leave the heart medication. With stable HCV, with persistent normal AAT enzymes, with good liver pathology, with old age, about, about 60, I, I must leave him in peace regarding the virus and deal with the heart. With the, the, sorry, the wisdom that we learned from all the new medications yeah. is we should follow up, we should look at the long term of exactly. Because the age of this club, of this class, is just three years. For, so we, we should wait before saying this is a magic bullet of anti-hepatitis C until we see the, the outcome of the, on a long term basis. Because sometimes we learn, we, we hear about side effects. Which is not, which is not, uh, not mentioned in the literature on the, uh, on the, on the lectures. Yes. You, you can find two or three patients which give you a very bad impression regarding one medication. And as you know, after the randomized control studies, in the post-marketing phase, many drugs are always wrong because of specific side effects. So we are looking forward in the future to know the fate of and the outcome of C and this class of treatment. Okay. 
general question <coughs> that you asked during the presentation, uh, the, our preference regarding treating hemodialysis patients or transplant patients to treat hepatitis C before transplantation or after transplantation, I think the, it's, the, there are many benefits to eradicate hepatitis C if we can before proceeding to transplantation. Because hepatitis C may lead to chronic adiabatic dysfunction, may lead to post transplant diabetes, increase the risk of post transplant diabetes, and other side effects, as you know. If you are ready to transplant? Yes. Those who are not candidate for transplantation. This, this was a, a big debate. Why? Because in Dallas and Uremia, the, the, this state of Dallas and Uremia may, may have anti hepatitis C. So you can find supporter and uh, uh, antagonistic regarding treating the patients on dialysis. But for the sake of community, and spread of hepatitis C in the community and the better quality of dialysis care and the patient will uh, live longer, he may witness the complication of hepatitis C. So if we have uh, safe drugs to be given in dialysis, the major form in the side of the new class is the limitation of GFR and dialysis. And even the drugs that you mentioned that can be given in dialysis is still we are waiting the randomized control study. I agree, I agree. I have mentioned so that if we have, if this class or the new anti, new versions of the direct anti hepatitis C drugs are proved to be safe to be given to the modalis patients, I think, and they are available, uh, I myself prefer to treat all patients with hepatitis C virus infection. As I mentioned, uh, regarding the backbone sophoscovale, our impression now is not uh, is not similar to uh, on emerging drug. Still. Yeah, thank you so much, and first we have for this elegant statement and talk uh, as usual. Now. Yeah. Um, it may look just a very simple question, but. We are just facing clinical practice after initiation of the era of the antiviral agent. And after starting the medication, they can stop. They stop the medicine because of renal issue. They start it when the kidney function is okay, and after some time, we get the patient with frantic picture of interstitial acute interstitial arthritis with rising blood urea and serocreatin, and when we do renal biopsy, we got uh, some sort of diffuse interstitial rights. And just very recently I've seen one patient like this. He started the first era of uh, sovati in Sudan and he stopped treatment after one month of treatment because his renal function was okay before starting the Yes, yeah, his line was okay according to the patient and you know, according to the committee they mentioned they started treatment of uh, patient on uh, Normal is line serum creatinine. And after almost four weeks, before even doing the BCR for the first wave, they noticed that too much edema and the uh, uh, measure the kidney function, it jumped to 5.5 milligram deciliter, and they transferred the patient to the urology surface. And they did all the investigation for the patient and it showed proteinuria of more than 5 gram per 24 hour. And uh, uh, I just opted to do a uh, renal you know, biopsy Unfortunately, the first specimen was uh, not adequate and it should. But they wanted to, to know diffuse interstitial difference. And I did the sample and I went in the, uh, the, the, uh, the biopsy to see what's going on for the neurovirus. So, did you, did you see some of the. Only one case like this. Uh, thank you, Professor Habba. Unfortunately, I missed your outstanding uh, lecture, so I have just two questions. Uh, the first about uh, 
the new medicine, which is being manufactured by a Farco Egyptian uh, uh, company, uh, with market production and cost. And the second is about our naive impression that uh, 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 the DEC lab is a better combination in terms of uh, sustained biological response. So if I have normal uh, uh, kidney transplant, for example, with normal uh, kidney function clearance more than 30. So we think that in such a case, so to be aware, that uh, will be better than Kirin. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, thank you, Professor Ahmed. Uh, I agree with you 100%. Uh, so that lab still in the uh, European guidelines, but it was removed from the American guidelines which uh, released since two, since two months. It is present in the European and removed from the American, to my mind. With our limited experience, we must have our own guidelines. It is suitable to most of our cases without marvelous uh, side effects, without complication, so, uh, our acceptance of the pathologist is that it is still work in combination and it is reported and recommended post liver transplantation, post liver transplantation and renal transplantation. Soft lady or soft daddy. Soft lady or soft, so it is accepted till now. About the new Egyptian medication, uh, please to wait. Please do it. But you agree that uh, something we have learned that uh, is a little bit better than uh, Kyo I mean, uh, if, you are, if you are comparing both, I mean, both the transplant, uh, I mean, generally speaking. No, it differs. Ah, okay. on, on hemodialysis, on hemodialysis, as in literature, Kyo Evo is better. Or that lab, 60 percent, 60 milligram per day. And the sophos bovel either once every day or every other day. So that. But post the transplantation, post transplantation, so that will be more suitable than uh, on beta barita ritona not mentioned post transplantation, not recommended, but they recommended post transplantation. So that or so little, which is hard one. Thank you, Professor. I have for you the extra two. Uh, regarding the, the treatment of patients with MCG and visual dialysis with hepatitis C, because uh, I, I agree with Professor Hussein regarding that they must be treated, because we are looking for our patients and they will survive for a long time, uh, not affected by only you know, the liability for transplantation or not. Uh, the other point regarding the, the, how we are. Uh, Living in the era of a lot of antiviral uh, medication for hepatitis C virus, and up to now we are depending on HCV antibodies for screening our patients. At the start of dialysis, although there are some problems regarding HCV antibody, as you know, uh, it could be negative at the, the patient in the incubation period, not solved except by PCR or lab test. And up to now, this is our not routine test for our patients. And also, an HCV antibody for supposed in about 40 to 50 percent. And if it is positive now, we are not, we are not, we are not sure if this patient has cured hepatitis C before, or this patient is still active with hepatitis C. So we must shift it to PCR. We think that the era of antiviral medication will change our screening for hepatitis C. And if you do PCR, not to depend on HCV antibodies. But HCV, any uh, good lab, any good lab, any good center, it is accepted as a screening method to be confirmed by PCR if it is positive. But it is, if it is negative, with normal imaging, ultrasonography, and the uh, absence of extra hepatic manifestation, I, I cannot. Uh, it is not recommended to do PCR if the HCV antibody would done in women. Now we cannot depend on that test or PCR or hepatitis C as initial screening for our patients.
with the new era of uh, medication for hepatitis C. Now, now we have a lot of patients with It is related to willing of the patient to be treated. Do you, do you, do you mention, do you, uh, you mean that it is related to the willing of the patient to be treated, so I must diagnose myself if it is negative, I search for PCR or... No, no, no. Yeah, we, uh, remember what I like to see internationally, it is not, uh, it is not uh, urgent to isolate the patient with a like to see. That depends on the prevalence of hepatitis C in the community. And the prevalence of hepatitis C is high, we must isolate those patients. But in the prevalence as in the European, prevalence as in European countries, that's about 1% to 5 or 6%, no need to isolate patients with hepatitis C. They can be analyzed patient with positive C beside patient with negative C. But now in the era of anti-hepatitis C treatment, and there is hope to cure hepatitis C, if the patient has HCV antibodies positive, and the, yes, most, could be false positive, could be if cured hepatitis C, could be active hepatitis C. If it is positive, I must jump to, go to uh, CCR. Of course. Yes. To be treated, as I mentioned, we want to treat every every patient, every patient, mm. not to leave one because of them. In, in the literature now there is intrafamilial spread. Intrafamilial spread. It is not even. It is not a matter of infection. It is intrafamilial spread with with a known uh, mode of trans evident mode of transmission. In the, in the, there is ten percent of patients didn't give a history of puncture, or surgery, uh, or any well-known mode of transmission. So it is better to eradicate the virus and treat uh, every patient. So if this HCV antibody is positive, I must, I must do PCR and treat if there is no contraindication to treat. If HCV antibody or PCR are negative or sustain the viral response, or patient receive the antiviral medications. HCV antibody. Patient receive antiviral. Yeah. If we, uh, we, we sustain the viral response negative, well, because and then now after three months from the treatment, ah yes, PCR negative, we will consider the patient as negative for the vaccine. Uh -huh. Yeah, if the patient is donating, willing to donate blood, ask him to donate blood. Yeah. Or organ. Or organ. Or organ. Even if treated with an autopsy. Or organ. Although 60% of donors in the United States, live donor, what can I tell you, are the hepatitis C positive. And they. Living, living? Yes, yes, yes. Living, 60% of the donors in the United States are hepatitis C positive. And when they logged the ad, they follow up, they found that hepatitis C. Positivity adversely affect the patient in the graph survival after transplantation. But for, for our locality here, where the hepatitis C is so prevalent and uh, there is the compensation, a lot of patients suffering from indecision of disease and the compensation, I think uh, we should think many times for accepting uh, hepatitis C. Role. So our policy is to refuse and to reject hepatitis C persons to donate, even if the, 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 he is treated. And not just two patients, two persons who were treated, father or mother, and uh, eradicated BCR persistently uh, negative for six months. So these, these two cases were sustained, still converted, and we accepted them on an individual basis. But our business is to refuse the donors who have positivity for hepatitis C because of our local problems. We are, we are blamed and we are advised. Why didn't you in Egypt, uh, with the high prevalence of HCV, why didn't you uh, transplant liver from HCV positive till diseased HCV patient? But it is not accepted for this. So uh, even the HCV antibody is not accepted in the expanded criteria norm. Whereas hepatitis B core and the body positive accept hepatitis B core and the body positive in uh, when the DNA is negative, it is accepted as expanded criteria donor. But HCV and body till now accepted. 
I just want to announce that uh, we increase the discussion from our side because it is a very hot issue in Egypt and it is so prevalent. Uh, and thanks for all regulations done through the last decade because there is a glimmer of hope of a decreasing and declining of the prevalence, but still we have a large proportion of populations affected by hepatitis C and its complication. This is why we shifted uh, in the discussion. And, but we now coming back to you. Yes, please. Je, je vois que en ce qui concerne euh, oui, je disais que en ce qui concerne votre exposé, euh, je, je veux dire ce, ceci, euh, je comprends que en Égypte il y a une très forte prévalence euh, de l'hépatite C, mais bon, dans les pays euh, africains subsahariens, je pense que la prévalence si elle n'est pas si forte en Égypte, elle est suffisamment élevée. Seulement, euh, il y a un problème. De ce que vous avez dit, la stratégie euh, qui est développée ici tient compte des nouveaux produits qui sont arrivés euh, sur le marché, euh, hein, les gens euh, Sophus Pivir, euh, ainsi de suite qui, euh, malheureusement, en Afrique, chez nous, ça coûte très cher. C'est des milliers de dollars. Des milliers de dollars. Hein, que les gens n'ont pas. Parce que, par exemple, dans mon pays, le Congo, il n'y a pas d'assurance médicale. Donc, euh, c'est vous-même qui devez payer. Et tout ça, ça coûte des dizaines de milliers de dollars si vous voyez le traitement qui, en général, se fait sur des, des semaines, des mois. Alors, euh, le traitement, j'aimerais euh, euh, vous écouter, comme vous dites, parce que le traitement classique en emploi, c'est toujours l'interférent péché plus euh, la révolverie. Alors, comment, si on reste dans cette stratégie, chez les patients qui sont suffisamment euh, rhinochroniques, dialysés, ou bien qui ont besoin de des transplantations, comment définir la meilleure stratégie en ce moment En ne tenant pas compte euh, quand on n'a pas accès au nouveau médicament. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 I think uh, in like uh, in like your country prevention is uh, the first prevention and prevention and blood screening and all measures for prevention then there is a, a big difference in the result of treatment of direct acting antiviral and interferon and recovery and duration of treatment i think your country can can uh, can modify the uh, the expenses of interferon and ribavirin till the direct acting antiviral. And if there is a considerable number of patients, you can get the drug with uh, one over 100 of the, of the, national, of the international price. But in the renal case, in the renal case, uh, and you want to use the interferon and ribavirin, there is a dose modification for both interferon and ribavirin. And also, it depends on uh, this patient will be transplanted or not. So, each case must be tailored regarding the interferon. In the era of diet, before the era of diet antiviral, we used interferon and ribavirin, and we prepared, prepared many patients before trans renal transplantation. We give them interferon with dose modification, ribavirin with dose modification, and uh, they will transplant. But, uh, but uh, when you find the direct acting, I think we cannot go back to interfere. Okay, perhaps I think we, we should uh, yeah, conclude some points. 
The uh, first point which was raised by Professor Kamal Akash about the increasing number of renal impairment uh, encountered after uh, using the new antiviral drugs, especially in interstitial fights. The uh, second point, uh, totally agree with Professor Shayesh that we should treat uh, or uh, most of the guidelines still insisting that we should eradicate the virus prior to transplantation. And adopting a policy of to postpone to uh, treat the post transplant, I think this policy should be revised in view that we are now confronted with uh, a severe uh, drug interaction uh, as we are confronted with increasing uh, levels of uh, uh, immune suppressive patients like tacrolimacin and cyclosporin and even serolimus. All this will carry in for Transplant. So uh, I think uh, it's very early to, to give a solid conclusion about these agents. Uh, it will need a lot of time to evaluate and a lot of uh, control to randomize the virus. It's there about the issue that you raised that how many patients on hemodialysis that enjoying hemoglobin level above 10. I think with the adequate dialysis and use of adequate uh, ESA therapy, ESA therapy, we can uh, have a lot of patients. So uh, I think Ribavirin could be used uh, uh, in a well equipped and well uh, I mean, uh, dialysis if it's performed uh, in a good way. Thank so, you. One, one comment, please. Yes. Uh, in cases of when I when I'm to prescribe direct acting antiviral, I must get a good, perfect basal renal function. Considering uh, considering that the serum creatinine and the cachectic hepatic patient may be uh, not informing well regarding if it is 1.5, as Professor Hussein mentioned yesterday, may be so high, very high, so I cannot depend on 1.5 and the patient is chronic liver disease and the cachectic patient. So I must get I must get a baseline, perfect, good renal function before starting by acting at the body. So you should bend the cat in the as soon as you get to the margin part. It is better to be done with the TD for because of the frequency of this renal side effect. This point, I, I congratulate you, Professor Hal, for your the most updated presentation about the Batel C. And uh, thank you very much for your presentation. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce uh, dear Professor. I'm